hey kids, it's time for another exciting episode of Gay W Judas. <laughs> We have the Reds here in our studio amongst our presence tonight. And you should feel goddamned privileged. Uh, no, not you guys. I mean the people listening. Uh, you guys are privileged too just because no. you're going to be on the show. Um, no. But the folks listening tonight Can are, I feel are privileged. privileged right now? To, I- is that okay if I feel like well, I, sure. I'm still going to feel privileged? Okay. okay. You're, you're a privileged young man. <laughs> we have that way. <laughs> the drummer of the Reds here, Mr. Jordan Bombay. Thanks for having me. What wow. the fuck was your real name? Uh, you, you, you were close. Jordan Bombay, Bombay close. coach of Team USA. <laughs> you got my first name, right? That's, that's No, that was Gordon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then we have Kellen Thane Dapp, yep. Mr. Jim Fear, yep. here for the second time. If you didn't catch the episode last season of Jim Fear, well, maybe we'll leave a link in the description. If you did, well, then you know who the fuck we're talking mm-hmm. to tonight. These guys were generous enough to come down kind of last minute, not entirely last minute. Yeah, but not really. We had some cancellations. We've been having a lot of cancellations. In the last like month or so, the last two months, only maybe two of my guests have been the ones that were originally scheduled to be there. Really? <laughs> so Damn. it's been rough. Yeah. The last <coughs> pardon me. Well What I'll, was I talking about? I'll happily take that opportunity. If if nobody else is gonna pick up the ball, I'll i I'll take it to the goal line. 
fuck, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Happy to I'm be here. I'm glad to have you. Yeah. And uh, also to have this guy keeping us current with his new projects. Yep. Yeah. And so, all the latest fashions, too, I might add. <laughs> of course. Jim Fear is kind of uh, on top of the latest fashions. Oh, my uh, God. He is the creator. Oh, my God. Of expecting a call from GQ any day. <laughs> In fact, what is this you're wearing right now, man? That's going to be the next new thing? Yeah, dude. It's just a button-up shirt and like cargo it. pants. Yeah, like that's it. been ironed like a professional. I didn't, you know, I just found out that cargo pants are nerdy. Are they really? I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently oh, cargo no. pants are fucking nerdy. Are you talking about that Wikipedia page? You got you got to check the, you know, you got to now, Wikipedia is backed up by some real shit. Up. Like, I mean, okay, it's run by nerds. And so if nerds say <laughs> this shit is nerdy, I think they know what the fuck <sighs> they're talking about, man. Oh, man. And I don't nerd. see what the fuck is so nerdy about cargo pants. I always thought cargo pants were hardcore. They still exactly. are. Exactly. I can promise you that whoever told you the cargo pants are over or whatever it is you just said. I didn't say they're over. I not, just said that cool apparently anymore. they're nerdy. But no, no. Uh, well, not cool okay. is not all. That, you're putting words in my mouth, Arliss. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I hate yeah. when people do that, and I just did it. To nerdy you. is still cool. I mean, nerdy is cool. I just didn't fucking know cargo pants were yeah. nerdy. I'm not saying that cargo pants yeah, aren't no. cool. Okay. I fucking okay. do. Look at my look at my shit. They're I like misunderstood pirate you. cargo pants. Yeah, dude. No, like, yeah, amen. They're they're lost boy car. I, I don't like it when people say, "Dude, you kind of look like a pirate." I'm like. I'm a fucking lost boy. Yeah. We kill Amen. pirates. And if they don't get what quote that's from, they're not my friend. Yeah. Well, you guys get that quote, don't you? Yeah. Thank, thank God I've seen a okay, never, ending sto- <laughs> never Ending Story. Is that what you're... Yeah, I think it was on Never Ending Story, too. Same kid. <laughs> yeah, the sequel, Never Ending Story, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did they actually make a sequel too. to that? Yeah, yeah actually they did. did. How? Oh, yeah, it's never-ending. Really they really how, did it. Dude. How is there not, like, a million sequels to that, like, fucking Star Wars? I know, dude. Because Disney hasn't bought it yet. They will. Yeah, I don't they know. Will. I don't know. They they kind of they tend to stay away from those, some of those. They have, like, the ones that kind of have a creepy, like, undertone to them. Oh, they're still badass. the only thing creepy about that thing was the oh, fucking that's... dragon. Why I love that it. That dragon yeah. freaked me out. Like, yeah. it was like a dog thing. Yeah, the dragon dog. When I was a kid, for some reason, it didn't sit well with me, man. Yeah, no thanks. I liked the rest of the movie, but he the He had, Falcor like, scales and everything? Freaked me out. No, he didn't have scales. No, he was like a dog thing, man. He had he no has, scales. Like, That's no, what scared me, is I thought like, dragons were supposed to have scales they and shit. Are. I thought he had, like, patchy hair in some places, and he had Nah, he looked like the Bear but, Lake monster. All right. Cool. Or at least what I what I think the Bear Lake monster would <laughs> look like. Yeah, Falcor uh, wasn't going except bald. Except longer, killer. Fal- right, Falcor's right. hair was lush. He's a big furry lush. bastard. All right. Very lush. He he was a good friend though. <laughs> Why are we talking about that? <laughs> <laughs> because your music. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Is so much more interesting. Thank you. Anyways, I'm not, I'm not sure if who I else is in this band. Is it just you two? Agree. No, Jesse Logan is our lead guitar player, and he just couldn't be with us tonight. So who's you're doing drums? I'm on drums, backup vocals too. Yeah, he you're doing vocals in rhythm vocals and bass. Oh, you're doing bass. Yeah, and guitar. And Word. guitar on the on the album, I played bass and guitar and vocals. Yeah. So, have you guys been doing live shows yet, or is this all just kind of a recording? We played one project? live show. So, there, so just to clarify, we all, we have a lead guitar player as well. Like they they both kind of interchange on leads, right. but he do, but Jesse does most of the leads, and he is not here tonight. But uh, Kellen's probably the one who did the most work on it overall. And, yeah. Commend him for it. Turned out really. But nice you still day. do live shows. We did one. Oh, We've yeah. done one so far. We're we're looking to play. But one thing that I kind of dig is this band of yours that you got going now. Yeah. It's still pretty heavy, but it's not like fucking. You know, like I still feel like people who aren't that big of fans of heavy music can still dig it. Mostly yeah. because you've got a little more clear vocals. 
but they're not like emo kind of vocals. Yeah. You know, they're not um, yeah. like uh, new metal kind of vocals. Yeah. They're not like douche rock, like, uh, you know, Seether or Hinder Nickelback yeah. kind of vocals. Yeah, cool, cool, good. Uh, you Thank know, you. like, you actually have a pretty unique voice. Thank and you. And I noticed, um, I haven't listened to all your other hardcore bands that you've been in, um, mm-hmm. but, like, you're not screaming at all pretty yeah. much in this whole band. And uh, is that something some that songs you, have some more like there, there, there's a some little bit, do. but not like your regular hardcore vocals. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? not much. I just I don't even know. I tried to sing powerfully and clearly. There's a serious sense of tension. Yeah, and that is like I've listened to your tracks more than once before. Um, I mean, you just recently sent them to me, and that was kind of what made me ask you guys to be on this show. Mm-hmm. But you sent them to me probably a couple months ago, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, you're doing all clear vocals on this, and it doesn't suck. And you do have a very different kind of voice, and like I said, there's like a very sense of almost like like urgency, like yeah. of like a, like a hastening almost uh, yeah. dis- distress. yeah. You know, and um, you guys busted this shit out really quick, too, didn't you? Yeah, I did all It's my... like you can almost hear it in your voice. Yeah. I <laughs> the did tension it. and the stress yeah. of, got to get this shit out <laughs> now! Yeah. It's, totally, <laughs> it's totally that. You've nailed yeah. it on the head. I think yeah. that's how like that's how I see it, too, exactly. It's like, it's ten, but that's kind of how I see all good music. There's a yeah. tension and then a release. But, yeah, for especially for that song that we just came out, uh, listening to the the first track, it's it's definitely got that just that forward drive tension momentum that uh, yeah can't can't really say much more about it. Word. Let's get into another song, shall we? Yes, indeed. Let's do it. Uh, the next one we have on cue is Hot Rail. We just listened, we just to, just Hot listened to Hot Rail. Well, fuck me. <laughs> All right, the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We did we did play Hot Rail twice at the show that we we played and it went over really well both times. <laughs> All right, well then let's just play it twice. Here we go, Hot Rail for the second time on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. This is the Reds. Thank you for listening.
<laughs> well, that was a good song. You What's were saying here? some uh, e- some very uplifting things about that song while we were off air. If you'd care to recollect or repeat them, I was like, dude, you should probably say this while we're recording. Yeah. Now that we are recording, you have that opportunity. Um, I, I appreciate <laughs> you opening that opportunity to me. Indeed. Unfortunately, I can't remember what the hell I was even talking about. You were talking about how much you love this fucking song. Oh, that's right. And why? The and I was like, man, yeah. you're getting all passionate, dude. Let's let's flip the recorder thing on and you can get all passionate. Well, one thing you may notice when you listen to uh, this record, if you call it that, mm-hmm. I see it as a demo, but it's a, it's a record. It's a record of what Nowadays, we've done. Nowadays, it's a record. Okay. Just call it a record. Mm-hmm. The thing that I enjoy about it as a listener, when I listen to it as a listener, it's uh, the, every song has a s- kind of a different vibe. Word. But if you'll notice, there's always like an undertone of like a rock and ro- roll groove, even though it's definitely more on the like metal side. It feels For like sure. feels like beefed up like classic metal. I mean, that that's hence the name The Reds, I think. Uh, yeah, even the name is... Well, it reminds me, my interpretation of it, they came up with the name before I joined the band, but I have my own interpretation of it. Do you mind if I interpret yeah, it? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. So when the, the band named The Reds, the reason why I became attached to it is because it reminds me of the concept of the blues, right? When you, when you think of the blues, there's a certain feeling that you're supposed to have <laughs> right. when you listen to the blues. So with the re- mm, and so that, and that feeling is like... So you know, I've having got the blues. The so <laughs> if you got the reds. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. blues is kind of like in there, but there's more of like just like the rage aspect of it. Like it's way sta- more hot of the stages yeah. of grief. The stages of grief. They probably all have like a different color, you know. And and we're in. I'd like to think all the the songs span the stages of grief, but the band name itself is like in that. Stage that that's my interpretation. Wow, it's like it's more of a genre than it is, it is. a band it's, name. It's meant to be the genre and the band name at the same time. No shit, dude, I dig it, man. Yeah. That's revolutionary. Thank you, thank you. Really, we if that, that catches on, you, you know, got to invest in that. I know, dude. As we do once unless a week, somebody's already practice. done it and tried it. They're like, man, we already tried. The more the merrier. Making a fucking genre called the Reds. No. It flopped. I, not been done. Back I welcome all, all contenders. <laughs> all contenders. Step we up and try. just like you guys. Yeah, dude. And everybody fucking hated it. <laughs> good luck. Well, great. Let's play a show together. You'll just make us look good. Oh, no. We're retired. <laughs> we all, oh, got, we retired. all got real jobs. Oh, oh real jobs. One okay. of us is a fucking investment agent in New Skin. Oh, nice. The other guy. What, be- the fountain? Yeah, he's the fountain. And the other one became a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? T- did that really happen? Tell yeah, me the truth. Look it yeah. Up. Okay. Did you guys even fucking sad. bother to look up your own band name before you chose the name The Reds? Like that hadn't been taken by a band that turned into a fountain what? and a typewriter? Yeah. It we, happened. We just, Wikipedia, that shit. We were just talking about it. Wikipedia. Wow. It's run by a bunch of nerds, and that's where you'll find it out. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And they All know. Right. I'm not saying because they turned into inanimate objects, you're good. You don't say. To yeah. To have that name. Yeah. Obviously. Well, yeah. I, I was telling you earlier. But I would like, just think you would have researched this. Well, we I was we well did. aware of the yeah. Cincinnati Reds too, dude. Uh, like, yeah, that's, that's a, a thing. that's a big. It was a purposeful move because we f- yeah. we actually feel like we have something special, and like we don't. Well, there is there is musical projects out there that have like similar. You don't think like titles, anyone's gonna think it's a Native American like a racial thing? No. And it insist that you change your name. That's a good. I like that you brought that up. That's an interesting point. However, neither of us thought of that. I'm ignorant and of that. You didn't even completely. think about typical really white didn't. fucking privileged well, people. It's, that it's difficult when you have so much privilege. Got like, to be and on I'm not even Judas joking about that. <laughs> like it's hard to notice <laughs> how privileged, privileged sons we are. Of bitches. <laughs> I'm totally. Well, I'm. I'm down to own up to that. Like it's. Uh, I. I, am, I want to own the fact that I am a. Privileged white asshole. It's it kind of sucks, but I'll own it. Just, <laughs> just for everybody listening, <laughs> being on this show really isn't that much of a privilege as much as it is a, a cursed obligation. Mm. And I have to do it every fucking week. So mm. 
I hope I am the so. unholy and cr- oh, begrudged cursed one. You better keep yeah, doing them. I just barely, you, I just barely I'm discovered I'm just passing my curse on to you guys for one week only. Hey, so. thank you. Thank you. Uh, you'll thank me when you're fucking out of here. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> let's get on to another song. Yeah, let's get we? this over with, man. Jesus Christ, I'm sick of smelling your fucking bo from the fucking draft to the fucking fan and shit. So am I. And uh, yeah, the only bo that belongs in this room is mine. <laughs> B- it's getting competitive in here. It's getting competitive. It was a very musty room we're in. We'll have to drop a link. Drop a link in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. In the future, you'll be able to do that. Drop a link to the way this smells. <laughs> yeah. You have no smellographs. Doubt. Smellograms. Smellograms. No, it's, we're investing all this shit into AI, and we still haven't figured out how to digitally transfer a smell. Yeah. Bullshit, folks. It's bullshit. Yeah. Tune into Judas Limbaugh and my conspiracy... Theory every fucking hour at 5.70 a.m. radio. We're going to get on with another song. Thank you all. This is the Reds here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo.
one's a banger. That was quite the banger. I've I been say. I've been known to call that one our hit. So, <laughs> there really is a yeah, just a real fucking sense of urgency in uh, in that whole sound, you know, in and in your voice and whatnot. Like, hopefully, people urgently go to our band camp and uh, download it. You know, you can you can you can choose that how much you pay. Wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good plug right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can you can choose how much you pay for the download. You can choose to pay nothing for the download. Just put zero in the little thing and download it. Like just take it, take like please enjoy it. If whoever if whoever's listening to it, please go to b- our band camp. The links in the description. Go and enjoy it. Um, band camp would be the w- the place to go. Then did you guys have some stuff on YouTube? We also have yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. So while we were here, you wanted to, I guess, shout out some props to a special we friend do. of ours. Special friend of ours, probably our the biggest fan of our band. The, like the the one guy I know for sure that's gonna listen to this and enjoy it thoroughly is our boy Uncle Bud. That crazy bastard. Jason <laughs> <laughs> More than he, a few of us know and love that man. He's actually been on this show. He was on the episode with Ritual. He was on the season premiere, the very beginning of oh, the yeah. season, actually. Yeah. And Beautiful. so he's actually going through some real tough shit right now. Uh, more than one just tough shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's going through uh, very... Urgent cancer pay, uh, operation. Neck throat cancer. He got throat cancer. Had two surgeries kind of on emergency status. Very, very immediate. Kind of, you like when he when he first told me that this was going down and then told me he was already getting surgery, I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, in, in a matter <laughs> of weeks. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it happened so goddamn quick. Yeah, if anyone's wondering, though, them. he did get the surgery and it went off without a hitch, and he's very grateful for that. The, apparently they did a stellar job taking care of him over there. But that's not quite the issue right now, is no, it? No, it's not. Um, where he's at, he's good, but when he needs to get out of the hospital... You just turn your mic off. He needs to... Oh. I don't know wh- why you're playing with it anyway. I don't know why either. I guess hey, I just what are you on, man? Adderall? Cylinders. No. Oh, yeah, yeah it's because it's phallic. <laughs> That's funny that you said you're not the first one to say that to me. And like, yeah, I take it as a compliment <laughs> because it's like this is uh, just me. The Adderall thing or the phallic thing? The uh, uh, <laughs> kind of both, but yeah, the Adderall <laughs> thing. I've been accused of uh, that, and uh, I take it as a compliment. You know, I'm, so I'm a high energy yeah. motherfucker. But I want to talk about more Uncle Adderall or less Adderall. <laughs> I don't. Do, I don't <laughs> exactly. take Adderall. Exactly. <laughs> I don't so take. So maybe Adderall. you need more of yeah. it. Yeah. So anyways, you were you were saying, <laughs> okay. I would like you to finish, see, because this is important. You're, okay, I see where you're going with that, though, now. Uh, no, we're good. Uh, we're getting sidetracked, Mr. Kay. ADD. Okay, Uncle Bud. Finish your thought. What He, he needs help uh, when he gets out of the hospital. He just needs somewhere to, to recover and heal from the surgery, and he needs it to be somewhere away from his current home. And he has just asked... He's asked his ward, which is the uh, Orem Second Ward, um, to second help him. Park ward. Second Park Ward. Sorry, he asked right. them to help him with that, and for some reason, they're not helping. They're not willing to they help him with that. They haven't been handling it the right way. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know what the other side of the story is, but Uncle Bud's side is quite, um, it's quite compelling. moving and heartbreaking. Yeah, it's compelling, and so if you know. <coughs> If this is relevant to anybody out there at all that that knows that ward, um, this is me saying it. And well, we can also put a link to his video that he just made. He just made a video. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is um, I don't know if we've done a good enough job at describing what the problem is um, or how people can help. But basically, he has reached out to his ward, and they have not been and her uh, very free. compassionate, and um, have not only brought up the the money when plenty of other members get that kind of help without any question um Mm -hmm. you know whether it's a matter of how much money he needs or what kind of help he needs what kind of services he he he's in need of or how active of a member he's been um to be perfectly honest i hang out with a lot of different people and a lot of different types of people like all across the spectrum 
uh, people that hate God, people that don't believe in God, people that actively b- believe and love in God, and, and everything in between. Yeah, all valid. And, uh, and he is a guy who really does kind of defend the church, or at least he has up until now. He still and so, does. And he still, he still does. wants to, to uh, not just, you can tell that he doesn't want to just completely turn his fucking back on the church, yeah. but they are giving him enough reason to pretty much do just that. And, um... They really are, but... He's looking for help, and so there is a GoFundMe. I know that. If you, if anybody does want to just lend a hand... Yep, we'll leave them in the description. There was just one other thing that he, sa- he said to me about the situation that just that tore my heart in half. Yeah. Because if you know anything about uh, Mormonism, a lot of the times in dire situa- situations, members will offer other members... A priesthood blessing. Uh, yeah, my Mormon you know, friends l- offer me p- priesthood blessings, yeah. knowing I'm probably gonna turn it down when I'm going through some rough shit. Yeah, it, it's just laying on of hands, and you know what? It's it, a it, little it, consecrated. It, oil. At the very least, it's good vibes. If you're yeah. into that kind of thing, like I don't, I don't knock it at all. Like it, and it's something that's important to Uncle Bud, and they didn't offer it to him. They never brought it up. They wouldn't even offer a priesthood blessing. Yeah, they didn't. didn't even offer it. That's like the first Uh, thing you're supposed to offer. Yeah. And they didn't offer it. That's supposed to be like the first round. Yeah, man, I grew up in the church. and Yeah, that's like protocol. Yeah, dude. Uh, That's like the first thing they usually say is, well, we'll send some motherfuckers over to give you a priesthood blessing. That's what you do. sure that doesn't help you financially, but it can definitely Hmm. be a booster. Um Emotionally and mentally, psychologically, yeah. and um, it's an important me step. personally, I wouldn't bank on anything like that because I don't. Ba- I, that's not my belief system. Right. But I but can Uncle definitely Bud see does. that meaning a lot to somebody who that is their belief system. Yeah, it's everything. It's all the difference. Yeah, yeah having grown up uh, Mormon as shit, yeah. <laughs> that is kind of fucked up. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. You can and see and also the, the question of uh, not wanting to be financially assisting, you know. Odd. Um, really odd. That 10%. is, kind of, that is a, a the tithing odd. thing. They, they, okay. they take people's tithing. I like, haven't been that's involved what this in is the for. church. And yeah, they definitely have funds. They've got, I mean, like, hey, I <laughs> should be able to at least ask. For a little help, you've been paying ten percent of your fucking wages the whole time that you've been going to church, you know. And and maybe they're trying to hold you accountable for that. Maybe it's because you haven't been paying your tithing, brother Messick. No, you know, he and didn't if that say is, then that's fucking bullshit too. Because all growing up in church, I don't know how many times somebody who is not an active member would still get support and yeah. still get help. Yeah. Totally. And I don't know how much the church has All changed since I stopped going to church because I haven't been to church for a while, and a lot of shit's changed. They don't even Certainly. do the, the the Boy Scout program anymore because of a lot of fucked up so shit there. So odd. And, right? Yeah, right? The, it's, yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's part of a lot of kids' childhood. I personally the more The Mormon church wouldn't have fucking kept me it. so long if it wasn't for the BSA, for the scouts. Like, the scouts was really, exactly. like, what kept me going to church. And it wasn't because I liked the way they touched me. It's because <laughs> I could touch myself yeah. that way, they plenty were... my own. You know, like, yeah. And then they, then they want to fucking interrogate you for that later. Yeah. You know, like, are they you worthy to pass the sacrament? Uh, not if I touch myself. <laughs> Do you? Uh, <laughs> am I supposed to tell you the truth? <laughs> yes, God damn it. <laughs> I told them the truth, and I was proud of it. And I At told them I <laughs> had no intention of stopping either. At least all you had to do was have the awkward conversation about it with him and not go through it with him and have that awkward conversation with somebody else later. I, f- I actually, he, a- my bishop asked me to leave the room. I, like, forced him through the awkward conversation. Like, You're I like, did, so, I, yeah. I whack it proudly. And he's just like, ah, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Fucking this kid. Again, <laughs> you probably don't even really whack it, do you? You're just saying I, that to fuck with me, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> you were like the Dennis Menace of your church. Kind of, it's, you just yeah, tell kinda. everybody that you masturbate and you don't even know what that word means. Yeah. You just like the fucking way they react to it. Yeah. Which actually, <laughs> you actually nailed it right there because I was bitch. actually a late bloomer. <laughs> well, me too, man. I was definitely telling my friends that I was masturbating years before I was actually doing it. 
Uh, not me. I, I was kind of the opposite. I was masturbating long before I even knew what the fucking word yeah, meant. That's I cool. even had my own word for it. Yeah. I called it gigoing. Gigo? Gigoing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that shit since before kindergarten, man. I was making Holy up. Not only, okay, not only have I been Holy whacking shit. off since before kindergarten, I've been making up my own words for shit since before <laughs> kindergarten. You know the word oh, wow. queesty? That fucking word, it's in the Urban Dictionary. Queesty is official, and that's my word. I made it, and I made the word giggling, and I'm going to see if I can get that, that shit you? submitted because giggling is an official word for masturbating. Wait, giggling was you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn. I made that shit up. So, wait, you've, you've heard that word? God, you've yeah, gigoed? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, that was one of our that was one of our phrases. I could have oh swore god, I actually god, made that. Up. Oh fuck oh you! Oh my god, bro. whatever. I'm pretty sure you're like, hey guys, he just turned it on you, dude. I just fucking gigoed all over the place. Let's have another you, song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on that note, we have the Reds here in studio. <laughs> speaking yep. of, speaking of gigoing. Let's gee get to it. KW Judas Free Radio Provo. <laughs>
Oh, man. It's these guys. Can you believe it? That's Shit, one of my personal yeah. favorites. How many years have we been playing that? And it's still just like new. Every I time. know, dude. We, 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 you can tell we're, we're, how we're long into have, our own shit. How long have you guys been a man? It's hard well, to count the years. We started, we started, the three of us started in uh, 2017. Word. And then but we took a that, hiatus. They were doing yeah, it before we were, I was We had a different drummer. For years before. I would listen to them from, like, the next room. Before <laughs> I, I didn't even, like, know who any of them were. <laughs> I would just... Well, I knew... I obviously knew who Kellen was, but the rest of them... And I didn't... Wasn't yeah. even his friend back then, either. I was. I just knew who he was because of uh, I Am The Ocean and, right. and uh, her Candane. You guys uh, kind of hang out with a lot of the same crew. Yeah, I, I there was a couple of people that I would hang out with, and I would, you know, I was a fly on the wall at a lot of those parties. Word. But yeah, so they were doing it long before me. Like those song, a lot of the songs were already structured. Uh, some of the there's some but songs just, in there that I helped with, but yeah, we just refined them with Jordan. Yeah, like every song has evolved, even to this day. The way that we play them live is a little different than they are on the recording. Yeah, it, ca- it can't help it. It just kind yeah, of it grows it just, and grows and yeah, grows. Yeah, it just has naturally happened. So, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's great. We we've it's been a great ride. It's been a long time coming. Works, you know. We're happy yeah. that we finally made the record, and now. Uh, we're hoping to take it somewhere. So, again, thank you so much for inviting us on here, man. I'm really stoked about this, honestly. Yeah. Um, I'm stoked about this show, actually. Like, uh, the or, overall, like, concept. I'm just kind of starting to get to know the vibe of it a little bit. Um, yeah, I kind of f- I'm forced also him to <laughs> watch a couple episodes before <laughs> this. So. They were great. Like, I'm al- <laughs> I've also just kind of, like you, I've just more started to notice like the appeal of like the podcast format and all the different directions that can branch off like it doesn't have to be just some dudes that we don't know sitting around and talking about shit we don't care about yeah it doesn't have to be that instead it's more specific shit people don't care about (laughs) yeah it's bands they never fucking heard of before and i mean if they don't know you guys personally and they don't even like your fucking music they could give a fuck less how long you've been a band or where your band camp is or who (laughs) but i appreciate them for (laughs) listening nonetheless and thanks anyway even if you don't check it out no, we still try and keep things interesting and tell fun stories and uh, enrich you with our derpenschli, which <laughs> we'll be getting mm-hmm. into uh, right after this next song. But yeah, I've been doing this shit for like seven years, and like I was telling you earlier, it would be nice if it paid off a little more, but I haven't actually had it like publicly online since like last year (laughs) so uh unfortunately even though i've been doing this for seven years it hasn't really been accessible to anybody yeah as of um you know like when the pandemic was going down and shit and uh you're i just was like let's archive the fuck out of everything i can yeah and i still kind of have a lot of stuff i am archiving but once i restarted kw judas back up it's just been a monster especially since uh i'm adding actual animated commercials in there you know with the derp and shit that's something i've only done as of this season uh i've never really done any editing you know like mm-hmm. all those past episodes, we would just hit record, and most of it was live bands playing live, which we rarely, rarely do now. Mm-hmm. And um, you just hit record for a whole hour. There's no editing. There's no stopping. Uh, you don't get a pee if you need to pee in the middle of the show. Mm-hmm. If you need, you know, grab another beer, whatever. Um, so it's a lot more work for me doing the editing and shit. And um, importing the songs into my program, and then it makes such a difference, though. Such a it huge really does. Difference, the it, editing. Like, I think I that, appreciate it a lot. Yeah, it makes the show go a little bit easier. It's le- way less setup, way less sound check. 
Um, and I feel like it's a way better finished product in the end. Yeah. Indeed. Sometimes, Indeed. like, especially not having the wizard here, but even when he was, sometimes it would just take for fucking ever to get yeah. a live, a good live sound. Yeah. And not even having to worry about that anymore. And sometimes you'd have everything set so perfectly, you don't change any of the fucking settings. The next band steps in like a day or two later, and it all sounds like shit again. Yeah. <laughs> and so you just go through the same process. And we've all been sitting in. here for like two fucking hours. Still haven't started the show yet. We still haven't <laughs> even got a good sound check yet. Yeah. Um. So yeah. at least, you know, that has definitely been way, way, way less of a problem. And uh, Wizard did a fucking amazing job at what he did. He really, like... For being n- never professionally trained, just like myself, e- even if it might have taken a minute, he did a great job, you know, for just being put on the spot and every band just being a whole different setup every time, editing. And uh, I wasn't the one in charge of that up until like a year or two ago anyway. And having Wizard less involved sucks, but it's better for me because I learn more shit. Yeah. You know, definitely. and I've definitely yeah. learned how to. Now that I know how to do video editing and audio editing, I can't not do it. Yeah. yeah. It's an art form. Yeah. It's, mu- it's, it's music. It's integral well, to it'll everything. It'll bug me too much if I don't. Yeah. You know, I'll go yeah. back and, you know, like, I'll be like all this shit that I could have done that I now know how to do. Yeah. Why the fuck didn't I? <laughs> and so, yeah, mm-hmm. like, like now that I know how to do it, it started out with me just like, I'll just do a little thing or two. And that's it. And then the next thing you know, I'm spending like a whole night going through cutting every little piece up and adjusting the volume. Yeah. And all that South Park shit. style. And yeah. Just tedious, tedious shit just because you know how to do it. It's not even, it is about having a good finished product. Yeah. But it's more or less just because I kind of have that mentality of like once I start cleaning something, Oh, I was originally just going to clean up that spot, but then I wind up cleaning the whole fucking kitchen, you know? Yeah. Yep. Spending a ho- the whole next couple of fucking hours. Same thing with the recording and editing process. Sure, yeah. I could just record all this once and just leave it dirty, sweep it under the rug, call it good. But then, yeah. You've been there, done that already, though. Once like, you're, you're, you're stepping into kind of new territory and right. getting cozy in it. You know, there's going to be mistakes, but. Oh, yeah, especially, you know, once I first started doing this, those derpishly commercials, I go back and I'm like, man, some of these are really good, but the audio is way up and down. You know, and it's because yeah. I'm learning all of this yep. as I go. Yeah, I'm not professionally trained on any of yeah, this shit. No. You don't. Nobody claim fucking it. teaches me anything, and I'm just figuring shit out. I mean, my buddy Eric from Waters Rising and Open Casket Road Show has helped me a lot with this recording program that I've been using, Reaper, my uh, DAW, and that's been useful. I got another buddy, Michael who has helped me a lot just with IT stuff. And, of course, Seamus, who helps out with Free Radio Provo. But other than that, it I just kind of figure shit out on my own. In fact, mm-hmm. I don't even really learn things usually by looking up YouTube videos, which even that would have probably helped a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into shit. I, I love doing, looking shit up on YouTube and trying to learn new things. That's the, pretty much this this guy and... YouTube have basically are are responsible for getting my musical ability in shape. Were like this man in particular that we're in the room with. <laughs> He's talking about me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kellen is an amazing man. <laughs> like Thank he you. he totally he opened up my mind to new po- musical possibilities that I could have that I was hoping for. You know, so thank you again. You're welcome. Gone. And Work. then YouTube as well. I was, I, was, I, I got to be honest. I, I like to look up like drum fills and guitar lesson videos, and I'm all about that life. You know, it's, YouTube's an amazing resource if you know where to look. Yeah, it is. It can be. Uh, when I kind of came mm-hmm. up with my own process, it's like I almost 
think I should make a YouTube video to show you yeah, how you I did it. <laughs> you should, dude. You know, I That's started kind of doing idea. it. That's a good idea. People That's might a like good that. Idea. The, those are the coolest kinds of YouTube videos is just a, vi- a learn along. And I, I, I would know. say the whole time, this is not the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, and people this is just that. the fucking way I figured <laughs> it out because I'm technologically retarded. Right. Never mind. So well, let's I, get. I, I don't know about computers. Your newfangled computer technology is. Uh, you got me there. I don't know. I'm not trying to confuse. Right them, over man. my head. Well, it's, I'm doing a good job of that <laughs> myself, as we can see. Let's get on to Please. our yeah. final number. Oh no, we have we got two songs left, and we have a Derpenschli commercial, a very special one for you people. So, without further ado. I am gonna play Karen. Wait, is that Carrion? Carrion. You know, like, yeah. like a like a carcass. Carrion. Oh, like Karen. a carcass, or if you're carrying something, uh-huh. and it's a play on the name Carrie. I get you, Carrion. Yeah. Could be do this. Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> That's where you stay Buried in dark Into the rain You are the roots That's where you stay Buried in dark Into the rain Just so that you So that you
When we last left our friends, they were in the middle of the most important interview of their career. When suddenly, a boisterous spokesperson interrupted to inform them their cohort, the wizard, had been missing in action and probably murdered since the last time we did this. Our heroes accept the challenge and are sent aimlessly careening into a very trivial unsolved mystery. When suddenly... Yeah, yeah, I don't know why he said and suddenly when there's clearly nothing going on yet. You kids coffee back there? Yes, Uncle Judas. Well, guys, we gotta find out who killed the wizard and put him in Durpin jail. Yeah, but where do we look? Maybe somewhere wizardly, like some steep, jagged, purple mountain range or something. Or like an enchanted forest. Or perhaps somewhere more reasonable, like, I don't know, maybe where he works. Golly, well, where's that? The old printing shop. Ah, yeah, this is a pointless drive. I finally get a license and now everyone wants a friggin' ride to nowhere. I mean, it's not like we haven't given you a few rides over the- Look, is that Derping guy? It looks like him. But what would he be doing up here? I think we should follow him. I think I'm gonna park the van in the back so nobody sees us. I don't think I'm just gonna tackle him. I'll never really lock that dead of guard. Wait! Wait. <laughs> Wizard? Wait, you're Derpenshly guy? No, no! It is not I! Look, I, I, I have a small eggplant! But I don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. That's what I just said. Look, wizard, you better start talking or else. Or or else I might punch you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, all right. I, I, I'll... Uh, 12 minutes later on the ride home. <laughs> yeah, that was quite the adventure, wasn't it? Crazy. That, uh, enchanted forest and everything, huh? <clears throat> Golly, I wonder whatever happened with Eric. Couldn't have been worse than us. Hey, kid, are you tired of coming home to the same. What happened to my house? Uh,. Uh, what do you want, Derpenshly guy? Uh, nothing. I was actually gonna ask if I could crash on your couch tonight, but, uh, never mind. Well, I guess... If it doesn't say Derpen, it's not Derpenshly! Well, that was an interesting uh, word from our sponsor, Derpin As per usual. If it's not Derpin, it doesn't say Derpin Sh- Oh, fuck. Derpin I always Schley. mess it up. God I, damn it. Is the, are these products actually available, though? Because, like, they're actually, some of them are, seem kind of, seem useful, if I'm just being honest. Like, is are, are these just, are these really just joke ads, or? What do you think? <laughs> of course they're fucking real. <laughs> Why would I, what do you think I just make this shit up just to be funny? Thank God. Thank God. Come on, it's Derpenschly. I'm so They're not going to let you down. I'm so sick of the fake ad trope. It's so t- everybody's doing fake ads now. Right. Like, yeah. Give me some real shit. Like, you know, please? Honda yeah. and Chevron yeah. and Purple <laughs> Blanket, Sonic. Yeah. Sonic. I saw this ad for a Sony Leo Hona one time and it just it really just yeah, grinded my Sony's gears. Sony's gonna fucking release. Like Sony's gonna make a Leahona. A new Leahona. <laughs> like you need a a better one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things timeless. That was one of the best cars they ever released. Well, it's a hand car. Is what it is. Right. Yeah, it's. And they don't really need. There, there's no room for improvement. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It gets you <laughs> where you need to go. Oh wow. <laughs> we, we should we just like. 
kind of leave it off at, at that note. Like, yeah, that's I what kind of so. show this I has been. I think this fucking show is over. <laughs> that's what kind of show this has been. <laughs> I hate this now. <laughs> we just kind of said it all out loud. I think that we should uh, probably, yeah, we still got time. Let's go meet up at the BYU Creamery, guys. Yeah. Ooh. Hell yeah. All right. You guys tell everybody where again can we find your music? Right. Please the use Bandcamp. Dot Bandcamp dot com. The Reds dot Bandcamp dot com. com. Yeah, we love Bandcamp. Please use Bandcamp. Please download it, or at least go on there and listen yeah, to it. Yeah, they're free download. Yeah, or we, you can pay as much as you yeah. want if you yeah. really like these guys. Yeah, give them like if you can two hundred bucks, that'd be great. But just if if you just want to download it and enjoy it, like please do that. Like that's payment enough. Give them three hundred bucks because there's actually three guys in the band. Ooh. Touche. And they all need a hundred bucks. Hondos? Yep. Yeah. Uh, a couple Benjamins. Yeah. So send three Benjamins to <laughs> www.bandcamp forward slash the reds dot com. That was it, right? Yeah. I don't know if I said no. that right, but no, you'll find it. Yeah. We'll put the link in the description. We will have the link in the description. Thank you so much. And we're gonna get to our final number. Right. Serpent Tamer. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's great pleasure to be here. K.W. Judas, Free Radio Provo.
would like to thank you all for joining us on another exciting episode of KW Judas on Free Radio Provo. We now turn you back to our regularly scheduled Free Radio Program. <laughs>